Welcome to Entrepreneur's Podcast, the podcast for developpreneurs, the podcast where you get to be a fly on the wall listening to real conversations of three developers trying to tackle the challenges they face as entrepreneurs. Hey, John Sonmez here. I just wanted to take a second to thank one of our wonderful sponsors, Telerik. It's no secret that I'm a big fan of Telerik. Uh, if you're looking to launch your own startup, then you should definitely check out Telerik App Builder. It's basically a cross-platform tool to create beautiful cross-platform mobile apps for iOS, Android, and Windows Phone using a really productive development environment. And it's a really cool tool. It uses PhoneGap and Cordova, a development environment to create uh, cross-platform apps in JavaScript. So you can use the skills that you already have to be able to build cross-platform apps. And, and they look really slick, really easy to use. Something that I definitely think you should check out if you're interested in doing cross-platform mobile development. So check it out. Uh, Telerik, you can get there if you go to telerik.com forward slash app builder. And we're live. I was going to say, what is it that John always says? And we're live. Beat <laughs> <laughs> you to it. No John today. No John um, today. I'm going to pick my nose. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's right, coming so, out to my neck of the woods. Yeah. Didn't he used to live out there? Who? John? He used to John. live out in... Yes, he Idaho? lived in Iowa. Iowa? Was it? No. Or Idaho? I, I get think it was Idaho. In Boise, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yep. That's not too terribly far from here. A few hour drive. Cool. Derek, Derek how are yes. your skills going today? I have to hear... So yes, uh, launched my um, Pro Express JS screencast bundle on Monday. I had nine emails going out starting last week. Um, Monday, I sold like 26 of them, which was amazing because my, my goal for the entire week was 20 based on the, <laughs> the two previous launches. So either people are you know more willing to buy from me or the content was something more people were interested in or I'm doing better with my launch sequences or something, you know, combinations of all of that, whatever the case is. That was pretty awesome. Uh, Tuesday sucked. I sold zero. Or no, Tuesday, Tuesday, I take the back, I sold five on Tuesday, five or six on Tuesday. Wednesday was terrible. I sold zero. Thursday was crazy. It uh, ended up selling 11 on Thursday. Nice, nice. Yeah. So that and, averages out to basically five, almost like yeah. five. Right, and today being Friday, um, this is the last day, so I sent out um, at 7.30 a.m. Central Time, I sent out a last day to get it um, email. And so far, at 11.18 a.m., I have sold seven of them for nice. a total of 50 this nice. week. <laughs> wow, that is awesome. So, heck yes. Um, that's a total... I sold one of uh, of something else as well earlier. Actually, it was, it was a guy that emailed me and said, hey, I really want to get your Express bundle, but I also need to learn the basics of Node. So what can you do to help me? So I put together um, an intro to Node bundle for him, and, and I, it's published in live, but there's no links to it. Oh, gosh. So I, those, I, those emails up. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going <laughs> new to. New product, new product. I'm, I'm going to. <laughs> um, so I, I, I bundled that one together for him um, and gave him 50% off of that one as well. So nice. He, he sent me $73, um, uh, $49 for the Express and $24 for, for the, the intro to Node. Um, so, yeah, 50, 50 total sales of just the Express JS bundle, which has come out to a total of seven, let's see, 50 times 49 is 2450 So 2450 bucks for approximately, I'd say, three hours worth of work. I like that hourly rate. Yes, I like that <laughs> hourly rate as well. 2450 divided by three, $816 an hour. And that's yeah. and it's not even done yet. That's yeah. the best part. It's I've still got, you know, the rest of the afternoon to hopefully trickle in a few more sales, and then one more email going out at 6:30 p.m. tonight, uh, 6:30 Central Time tonight, saying, "No, really, this is your last chance. Go get it now." <laughs> nice. Right. Speaking I need, of I need Central to look Time, 
uh, Drip, Rob emailed me after the after our podcast let, um, came out over the week mm-hmm. or midweek, and uh, they added they added a drop down menu yeah. to the time zone selection. So yes, so you can you can either send it at at subscribers time zone or yeah. UTC time zone, which is a perfect solution to that problem. Thank you for that, Rob and and team at Drip. There, I think that they he said they're going to be uh, setting it up so that it defaults to the admin time zone, right. which is what I want. Um, right. Because yeah. the subscriber time zone doesn't work if you don't have if if they're not using the drip widget. Just right. An FYI. So if they sign up through Twitter or something like a tw- uh, Twitter card, they won't have a time zone and they'll get it at UTC. Yep. Or or if say you've embedded the form in your web page somewhere and not used the widget. Yeah. Right. right. Which is like all of the people on my lists. <laughs> yeah, which is literally right. everyone on my list. And I mean, well, I'm, I guess the, some of the people that, that came over from MailChimp would have had um, a, a time zone, but... Yeah, I don't think I kept then, those when I did mine, when I did my import. Yeah, so I'm, I I pretty much send everything at, in, in my time zone. Mm-hmm. And, and people expect that at this point. Yeah, I yeah, so I was, love Drip. I was pretty happy to, to, to see that. That was pretty cool. Chuck, are you off on Tripport yet? I, I am for the email stuff. Okay. Uh, You're still paying. <laughs> That's great. You're yeah. still paying 300 bucks a month. I'm still paying for for the privilege of having people pay me for the forum access. Okay. Um, I am going to evaluate that, and if it's anywhere close to break even, in other words, if it if I'm not making money or if I'm only making like a few hundred dollars a month, I'm probably just going to kill the Entreport stuff and move everything over to Stripe, and then I'll just move off of there. Right. And then I'll just export whatever lists I have. Um, my Entreport story, though, goes something like this. I had forms on my uh, on devchat.tv, so people could they could go in and they could sign up to get, you know, emailed about past episodes, right? Mm-hmm. Well, it turns out that either I screwed something up or they screwed something up because the form didn't actually tag any of the people who, oh. <laughs> who signed up on it. So it shows me that 149 people signed up for notifications on Ruby Rogues or JavaScript Jabber, right. and I had like 300 on the other show. I don't remember which was which. But uh, anyway, it, it could tell me how many people had signed up on that form, but it couldn't tell me who they were, and I didn't have them tagged, <laughs> and I contacted Entreport <laughs> support, and they told me, oh, no, you're just out of luck. Yeah. And so I was like, I was like, okay, well, and, and I, I was actually trying to get those lists so that I could import them into Drip. Yeah. Uh, yep. Setting up Drip was, <laughs> it was so freaking easy. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so I've got all that set up, and it's sending out emails now. Um, and I've got... I think I think JavaScript Jabber has the most. It has uh, 71 people. Th- I made this change on Monday. Um, oh, wow. You've already got 71. Well, I guess you imported some, right? No, I didn't import any. Oh, gosh. You've wow. already got 71 emails? That's impressive. Ruby Rogues is at 40. Did uh, you create it or anything, or is this just t- traffic? It's just traffic. Oh, I haven't wow. told anybody about it. And I forgot to mention it on my shows this week, so I'm going to have to remind <laughs> wow. remember to do it next week. Dude. Adventures in Angular has 21. Yeah. I, I Freaks is sad. They have two. <laughs> <laughs> Freelancer <laughs> show is at eight. Um, but the Dev Box Club thing is the other one that kind of blew up. That has 230 something. Nice, nice. 235 people on there, and that's after about two weeks of having that. And have you mentioned that on podcast or yet anything yet? I did. I mentioned it on all the shows. But okay. right. and so I got an initial. If you look at the graph, um, it, it's got a big spike at the beginning. And yeah. Kinda, <laughs> it kind of does this, it up and down, just kind of at right. the bottom of the graph. So, I, you yeah. know, I have people trickling in. Um, but, yeah, I need to get an email sent out for that. But anyway, so that's that's kind of what's going on there. But I am loving Drip. It just makes it so easy to do this stuff. I mean, I suck at copywriting, so I need to fix that. But <laughs> Yeah, the only way to get better at doing that is to keep sucking at it until you get better. Yeah. Just got to keep well, doing it. I mean, look at the junk I I was writing. Like I I, I took I took one of the um, my JavaScript fundamentals uh, landing page on Watch Me Code. So it's like WatchMeCode.net/slash JavaScript-fundamentals. 
I, I went back and, and tried to re rework it a little bit uh, for my JS Fundamentals launch, uh, bundle launch that I did last month. And I read through the page that I had written like a year ago and was just horrified. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was awful. I, I was I, I couldn't believe that I wrote it. It was so bad. And so I went through and, and rewrote it and reworked it and, and made it kind of better, but I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it, so it wasn't super great. But it's 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 kind of amazing to see how much of an improvement I've made in the last year of doing this, just seeing that old page compared to to, to what I'm writing now with this Express.js launch page and and whatnot. It's so yeah, just just keep doing it. You'll keep getting better. Do it yep. more. Yeah. So there's yeah. So there there's that. Um, the Ruby Remote Conf list has 15 people on it after two days. So nice, nice. You are like a an email vacuum. You're yes. Just sucking them all in. <laughs> yeah. In but a year, that's gonna be it's gonna be a huge asset. That's that's kind of what I'm thinking, and I'm really yeah. excited about it. I mean, um, I just the problem was was that it was it was too painful to do it before, and so it was like okay, well I'll find time because I know it's important, and then I never did. Right. But, but Drip made it so that I can set everything up in like a half hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like okay, here we go, boom, done, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's fast enough to where and painless enough to where I I just do it. I don't even pay Mandy or somebody to do it. So. Right. So I'm curious how you're doing this because you've got so many different properties. Are you putting people on different campaign? Like, um, so when people sign up, do you have all those different accounts? Yeah, or so they're all they different all campaigns. Okay. Um, I'm trying to decide if I should have put them all into one campaign and tagged them instead. No, no, yeah, definitely no. Not. Yeah, I, I like I like the campaigns too. Yeah, you you definitely want them in separate campaigns. Um, you might. They're all zero. They're all zero part campaigns. I mean, right? Just, yeah, that's it fine. It just plugs them into the RSS thing. You, you you're gonna want to tag them as well, um, because you'll you'll end up doing things over time where, man, if I yeah. could just send this broadcast to only these people and. And you right. can you can use campaigns, people that are subscribed to campaigns, in order to segment for your broadcast. But there there will come a time when it's going to make more sense to have people tagged than to have people in a campaign. So make right. sure you are tagging people as well. Um, right. And if you if but you can do that at any time too. Yeah, that's right. true. Uh, like you can just go in and tag everyone in the campaign. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking at. The thing that I think would be interesting is after I've run this for a few months is to go back through and basically see how much crossover I have between the different shows. Yeah. And mm. so I can say, okay, I've got you know, this many people who oh, subscribe yeah. to everything, right? Because right, those right. are my kind of elite. Those are the people that I want to really uh, get something out there that just nails what they need because they're already into everything I do. Right, right. And then, you know, I can kind of break it down from there. Okay, you know, four of the shows, three of the shows, two of the shows. Yeah. Yeah, and you could do yeah. that with segmenting and, and do yeah. some, some lead scoring on those those kinds of crossover segments. Yep. So one of the mistakes that I made with, with Drip was actually having Watch Me Code and DerekBailey.com in one account, which in your case I think makes sense because this is all related stuff. Mm-hmm. What do you mean in one in, account? So you you can have multiple accounts. Yeah. In I yeah, have. Okay, wait. So you know how an entreport every like if you had five different websites they would all go into one bucket. Uh huh. With Drip you can make different buckets. You can have different accounts, and you can switch. So like I have one for JoshuaEarl.com, one for Entreprogrammers, oh. one for Desk Hacks. Right. So. So I'm I'm gonna paste uh, uh, an image URL in the chat window here. And I love you. you guys. <laughs> so I've got I've got three accounts inside of Drip. Yeah. One for Signal Leaf, one for Derek Bailey, and one for Entree Programmers. Um, because Josh gave me access to the Entree Programmers one. I actually I I need to go and and split Watch Me Code out of Derek Bailey, because so many of the things that I'm doing right now with this launch sequence are okay. Send this to everyone that is 
um, part of Derek Bailey, but not part of Watch Me Code, and has done this mm -hmm. in Derek Bailey, but not done this with Watch Me Code, and, and it's just <laughs> getting really ridiculously yeah. complex. And if I have that separate, if if I if I move all of my Watch Me Code uh, stuff into a separate account, then I can just you know blow everything to my Derek Bailey list and not worry about it because hey, right. if, if you signed up for Watch Me Code, you're just getting Watch Me Code. If you signed up for Derek Bailey. You're just getting Derek Bailey, and if you signed up for both, well, good for you. You're going to get both. So, is there? So, the only campaign I have that's kind of the odd one is the Ruby Remote Conf right now, and mm -hmm. yeah, it makes a lot of sense to put that in its own account. Yes, I, it's not a dev I would. TV property. Yeah. Yep. Um, so. How do I? Yeah, do for, for you, I, I would have devchat.tv as one account. And then you know all your other conferences and things have their own accounts. So what you'll do, um, you'll go in and create a second account, um, mm -hmm. and then when you're ready to move people, um, you'll do a uh, in your subscribers for in, inside of the devchat.tv account. You'll go to your subscribers. You'll do a filter to get everybody that's currently subscribed to your Ruby Remote Conf campaign. And then you'll save that as a segment and mm -hmm. export that saved segment. Um, and then once you have exported that saved segment, you'll switch your, over to your Ruby, Ruby Remote Conf account. And then inside of subscribers, again, you'll do a bulk operation to import all of those people into that account. Okay. Right. And they will not get like a confirmation email or anything. So it's just right. well, transparent you can, to them. You yeah, could, you, you could set it up so that they did. Right, but, but I wouldn't. Yeah, but there's no reason to because I haven't no. actually. They've already opted into your. Yeah. Right. They, yeah. They've already opted into your email list. You're just organizing your your list better. Right. So you, you really don't need to send it an opt opt in notice at that point. But yeah, do that. The only reason I haven't done that with Watch Me Code is because I have a ton of automation set up. And, and I, I emailed Jip and asked them if there was a way to duplicate my account, and they said no. They, there's there's far too much um, interconnection in the data that they, yeah. they there's no way for them to do that, and I I totally understand. So I just need I need to I probably need to pay Mandy to do this to to go. Yeah, because you're gonna probably need to account. like yeah like get export tags and like you're yeah. probably gonna have a lot of yeah she would work. be really good at that. Yep. Yeah, because I've, I've, I've had her do some work for me in the past, so I know how quickly she gets that stuff done. Like when I had her import my uh, email archive from MailChimp into uh, DerekBailey.com, um, I expected it to take a couple of weeks. She, t she had it done in four hours. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's what happened when I hired her initially, was that we had three or four backlog episodes of Ruby Rogues that... Um, the assistant that I had at the time just he was way behind and uh, so I I just handed her the next new one and said look you know if you can get this done you know in a reasonable amount of time you know then I'll I'll have you do all the ones going forward well she got that one done so fast that I gave her the other three and told the other guy to forget it right and uh, <laughs> and so she had all of those up she had everything fixed up on the site and she was on top of the rest of it so nice you know, it was like, okay, well, if I need crap done, I mean, she's the one that's going to make it happen, so. Yeah. So anybody that's listening out there, that's devreps.com, D-E-V-R-E-P-S.com. Yeah. Highly just, recommend it. Just tell her tell her that you heard about her here, because... Uh, yep. And she'll say that she's too busy <laughs> taking one. <Yeah>. Of <laughs> and then she sends me nice notes. <laughs> That's about all I get is, hey, thanks for whatever, but yeah. I get discounts. I've she's I've sent so much business her way that last time I asked her to do something for me, she's like, well, my usual rate is this, but I'll give you a discount because you sent me so much business. <laughs> yes. Dang, I'm getting ripped off. Oh, no. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> this is what happens when your clients can talk to each other. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep, but anyway, so there's that, and then... Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm just. I'm really loving drip. Yeah. So yeah, if it if it looks at all po at all worth it to get rid of Entreport, I'm probably just gonna do it. Yeah. Yeah, I liked Entreport. I mean, it was pretty. I liked it compared to Mailchimp. The the only thing, yeah. the, honestly, the only reason that I switched was because of the cost. Yeah. But now that I'm on drip, well, once I 
once I realized that Drip had a lot of the features that I needed, initially I thought it was just like, you know, just to do like the, the five day email sequence. Well, that's thing. what it was originally. Yeah, originally. And I think I hadn't looked at it since then. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is not really what I need. Because right. I was going to have to pay for that plus MailChimp. Um, but yeah, once I realized that it had all the stuff that Rob's built in. Yeah, yeah, it was kind totally. Of no brainer. Because when I it was going to be like eight hundred bucks a month for me on Entreport. Wow. At least. Yeah, when I started with Drip, I just did the the five day um, email sequence, because and that's what I wanted it for, and that's all I used it for. But once they started adding in all those automation features, and I realized that I wanted those automation rules and and everything, then it just it made so much more sense for me to to switch to Drip and get off Mailchimp. And now that Drip has the RSS to email as well, there's... Oh, yeah. That's a big win for me. Yeah. So I did a... Um, I had I had a f- put, got to put Drip through its pace this week. I did a um, webinar with uh, Sean uh, Fiorito, the nice. sketching with CSS guy. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, so I had a lot of fun with Drip. So <laughs> the, what I did was um, we, we wrote... I, I mentioned those ads. We ran two ads in the weekly newsletter. So um, I set it up so that everyone who clicked those links would get tagged. Mm -hmm. So I was tagging people who were interested in the webinar and I could follow up with them. I also, so then, uh, did I tell you, did did I forward you guys the email about from Rob about the um, tagging, you can tag people based on links they've clicked on in the past now? In the past, yeah. Yes. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, so you can go in and and look at any email you've ever sent um, and see who's clicked on the links and then you can you can apply tags and it's in line it is super easy I went through like six months worth of emails in like 20 minutes and I just tagged a bunch of people so I tagged anyone oh, wow. that had clicked on anything related to HTML CSS JavaScript um, I tagged anyone who clicked on what the link for Wes's book the power user book um, so I had so what I did so Coming into this week, I had a list of people who had clicked on the link about the webinar, and I had a list of people who were interested in HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And so the the webinar was for kind of the sketching with CSS concept. So on Tuesday, I sent out another email to my whole list, except for the people who'd already expressed some interest in the webinar. So I was able to segment out those and I blasted out another email that was more like it was mostly content, but then it pitched the webinar at the end. So, but but anyone who'd already clicked on the webinar link didn't get that, so I wasn't bombarding them. And then Tuesday afternoon, I sent out a like a last chance email to anyone who'd clicked on the webinar link. So that ended up being about that was a really big win. So that ended up being about um, 4,700 people. 4757 I'm looking at. Um, I got a uh, 58% open rate, which for this list is really, really good. Um, oh, and wow. th- 13.3%, uh, 13.7% click throughs. So those are people clicking through to register. Um, we got like another 250 or so registrations just out of that one email. And I didn't have to annoy the rest of my list. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was great. I was really excited about that. Um, so and then yeah, so that was so now I have I have and then Sean also sent me a list of everyone who re- actually registered for the webinar. So and I tagged all of them, so I know, you know, I know who's I know at each step who did what related to this webinar, and I can use those tags in the future. Uh, and we had pretty good turnout. We had about a hundred people show up. So we're oh, still waiting. Nice. Yeah, we're still waiting to see. So he sent out a um, he sent out a coupon code like a twenty percent off his his book package. And uh, still waiting to see. I think today's the last day for that, so I haven't gotten the final sales numbers. But that was that was a lot of fun. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it, yeah. There's there's. It's really nice being able. So now that I have this capability, I'm gonna try to try to sprinkle in more topical in you know, like more variety in the links that I send out. Mm-hmm. So right. I can you know I want to identify all the Ruby people, for example. So I need to have some like Rails stuff in there. Right, you know, and then you'll be able and, to to segment those people and start, yep, you know, start sending them content subject specific stuff. Yep, exactly. That's pretty brilliant. Yeah, so I've got um, 
Yeah, I've got a bunch of nice little... Let me see here. I'm looking at my tags. I love the tags report now, too. It's great. Tags report? Yeah, you can see you can see how many people are... Um, oh! In the... I have not looked at that report yes. menu in months. There's yeah, they've added a bunch of stuff. A lot of really good stuff in there. That's where you get the clicks. That's how you that's how you tag people. You go to the you go to reports and you go clicks and then you can pick the email and you can pick nice. You can see the link and you can just tag people. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've got, you know, I've got I've got I've got like 3100 people tagged just JavaScript, CSS, I've got 1600 people, HTML, 1400. Wow. You know, so I'm starting to collect some uh, some good intelligence here know what people are interested in. Yeah. I'm actually kind of surprised. JavaScript is the biggest one by far. Not surprised. So. Does it put the RSS emails in here somewhere? They go into broadcasts. Yeah, I think they're under broadcasts. I would love to have groupings in broadcasts, if you're listening, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna be, I'm going to be able to group my broadcasts. It's not a campaign. It's a group <laughs> of broadcasts. <laughs> I'm not seeing anything in here for any of it. And I should have sent out emails this week to the people. Make sure you subscribe to your own mailing lists. That's a yeah, great I've been way doing that. To test everything. Yeah. So I'll know next week for sure on that. But yeah, yeah. I I've, I've been subscribing to all of them just to make sure that I'm getting them. But I subscribed after you know, on Thursday I subscribed to Ruby Rogues and JavaScript Jabber, which is a day too late. So Right. <laughs> Yes, and actually, I haven't. I, so I have not yet um, pulled the trigger. I need to do this on the on the uh, the purge. So I had I had identified about nine thousand people that I'm going to delete. So yeah. that will my open rates will be significantly better after I do that. Actually, the last few weeks, um, my uh, I mean, I've been getting I've been I've hit I've come close to forty percent on a couple couple of these last emails. So nice. Yeah, I think I didn't actually do any permanent damage like I was worried about. Yeah. So I've it lost, seems like I've yeah, lost like seems... two hundred subscribers for, with this launch camp that I did. Yeah, <laughs> it's been kind of awful. That is um for you out of four thousand. Yeah. 4, yeah, so that's about five percent. Yeah, it's um, it's, it's an average of about 05 percent loss per email. Yeah. That's with that's with, almost. Ex- yeah, with, like, with, with almost ten emails, it'll be almost five percent. Yeah. So I'm sending out like mostly content emails, and right. mine are like point three, point five, point four, point four, point right. four. Like it's it's point three to point five every single time. It's just inevitable. That's actually not bad at all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, much. I've That's I was I, I've had unsubscribe rates as high as as four or five percent per email in some of my, <laughs> my watch. Do you before. insult their children or their mother or something? <laughs> well, it was, it was back when I had never done any kind of launch sequence, so it was like the okay. very first few times that people were getting any kind of of advertisements. Your writing was pitch. really bad, I guess. It really yeah. was. It was, <laughs> it was awful. People run away screaming. Oh, good times. So Chuck, are you? So you're just using. So right now, you're mainly just looking to blast out the um, the the show notes and a link to listen, right? Yeah, basically. Um, I definitely want to flesh it out a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I'm gonna pull in one of the sponsorship spots and figure out how to do a layout that puts their their banner at the bottom or something. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah. And that way, the the top sponsor on each show will get exposed to the right. audience, or vice versa, or whatever. But anyway, um, what so you need yeah. to do there is is set up your layout so that it pulls the image from an external URL. Yeah, pulls the image and paragraph text. If you, well, I don't think you can do that, but pull the image at least yeah. from an external URL, and that way you can rotate the image without changing your layout. I like that. Yeah, and you can also have multiple templates too. Right. So you uh-huh. can have uh, you can have one for each show if you want. Yeah. Or... yeah. So that's what I'm looking at doing, and then um, I need to. So right now they just get the show notes; they don't get the picks. So right. I need to get oh, that okay. in there. Okay. Um, I think that will help with like uh, Amazon affiliate sales and things like yes. that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Big time. Um, but I mean, ultimately, at this point, it's just kind of a value add for listeners, and it's it's also a way for me to get in front of them so that. You know, in six months, you know, if I have 
a few hundred or a few thousand people on any given list, and I can reach out to them, and I know who they are, and so I can say, hey, yep. you know, I'm I'm looking at doing this, or I'm getting ready to launch this, and then um, I can pull the trigger and you know support things like uh, the Kickstarter campaign or something, and uh, you know, so if I'm doing stuff like that in the future or putting together a conference or something, I can put it in the inbox of you know uh, a thousand or a few thousand of my favorite people. <laughs> You know, one one thing that's just occurred to me, um, you might be able to set it up so that you can tag when people... Hmm, this might not work. Well, what I was going to say is you could set it up, I think, so that they you could apply a piece of custom data to their account when they subscribe. Mm-hmm. And then you could mail, mail merge in, like, the, um, like, the show. Like, if you wanted to, as a listener of, you know, blank... Uh-huh. Um, you could you could merge that in, but I'm actually thinking that that there might not be a way to do that because you'd have one field, but you've got people subscribed to multiple to multiple shows, so never mind. Yeah, I'd I'd probably just do some segmenting and be intelligent about yeah. that. If yeah, you want to. Oh, you're on five lists. I don't want to send you five emails. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but cool. Speaking of the Kickstarter campaign, I have 25 backers for $971. Nice. And that's after two days. Nice. Sweet. What's your What's your goal? Five grand. Five grand. So I should make that pretty easily. Yeah. Um, what I'm really excited about, though, is that if I have 25 backers, that's 25 people that are potential subscribers to Rails Clips. So going right. forward, you know, um, I, I can come out of the gate with at least that many people. Right. So, yeah, when I switched over to a subscription model, I had a few years worth of people that had purchased individual screencasts, and so I I, I rocked it with um, about 200 and, 210, 250, I can't remember, a little over 200 subscribers right out of the gate. It was pretty nice. Yep, that's, yeah, that's definitely got to be... Nice. So yeah, they won't they won't have the recurring billing set up because I'm just going to add them to the system. Right. But um, I'll just build something into the system so that when their subscription's about to end, it you know it just reminds them, hey, look, we don't have any credit card information for you. If you want to keep getting these, then right. So are you going to build your own system to do all this? Your own website? Your own? I've pretty much already done it. It's it's all built into DevChat.tv. Okay. So that's that's what I'm looking at. I looked at some of the WordPress setups, and I wasn't really excited about figuring out how to configure them. Right. So I wound up just kind of building my own, which took a little more time, but I'm getting what I want. So. Yeah, for me, it was it was a, a matter of I'm 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 gonna spend a day on this and be done with it, or I'm not gonna do it and I'm gonna stop screencasting. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, I mean, it was it was quite literally down to that. That's a stark choice. <laughs> yes, yeah. it was, I was that was that was one of the one of the horribly depressing episodes, like episode four of Laundry Programmers or something like that. A dark night of the soul. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I am trying to figure out with that is um, I have a merchant account and I also have a Stripe account. Um, so Use your to- Stripe account. The so the the thing is is that I've heard a few people talk about uh, fees and that I may save a bunch of money if I use my merchant account. Use but, your Stripe account. <laughs> <laughs> but no I, amount of I, saved I, money is worth can, the PCI compliance nightmares. That's that's the real use your Stripe have, account, right? Is that yeah? I mean, if they if I use my my merchant account, my understanding is is that I have to have the credit card information at least pass through my system. Yes. You are responsible at that point. Yeah. Use the Stripe account. So, Derek, how is your setup then? Is it like a JavaScript API call to Stripe? Yeah, that's the way yeah. it works. Yeah, so SignalLeaf, um, when, you, when you do a checkout on SignalLeaf, um, the credit card handling is done in your browser initially. It'll do an HTTPS uh, post over to Stripe, uh, return a token back to yep. me, and all I have is a token. I send the token back to my server, and then my server uses my private key to say, use this token, charge this much money, or set up this mm-hmm. subscription or whatever. Right. Um, okay. With, with uh, uh, Watch Me Code, 
and you know, anything else that I'm doing through third-party systems, it's essentially the same thing. I'm just using somebody else's plug-in to do exactly that. But mm -hmm. the, I, I use Stripe for, for everything. Um, I actually did turn PayPal back on for this launch for the, the, the individual product sales, and I've, I've had a lot of purchases through PayPal, which I think has contributed to the, the, the total number of uh, purchases compared to just credit card. Yeah. Uh, but the I, I generally don't like PayPal because I just have constant problems with them. But I'm I'm finding that it's easier to deal with PayPal for individual purchases than it yes. was to deal with them for subscriptions because their subscription model stuff. Whoa. is... Cool. Hey, John joined us. <laughs> hey, John. Through the airport. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. We get this I'm, like up your nose view. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not. I'm not playing slot machines. Why not? <laughs> I, I want to hear some some really slot machines. Well, if he if those were slot machines, he's not in Salt Lake City. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's probably stopped over in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in Vegas. <laughs> nice. Nice. So yeah. if we all start throwing up, it's because of John's the, the sickness. Vertigo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yes, Chuck, it, it doesn't matter how much you want to save a few dollars. Yeah. Do not do it. Use Stripe. Yeah. Use, yeah, I use, think... use anything. I don't care what third-party service it is. Use use PayPal. Use whatever. Use oh, lending. PayPal is such a pain. Brain in the tree. Use, use anything. Do not. Handle credit card processing yourself. Yep. I, don't care. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Just don't. <It's laughs> well, DCI think... compliance is such a nightmare. And even even with your Stripe account, you are still responsible for a certain amount of of compliance. And you right. you, got, you got to do SSH. You got or SSL. Yeah, SSL. Right? You got to do SSL. You got to make absolutely certain that you are not even accidentally getting any financial information about your customer sent to your server. Even if your server does not do anything with it, even if your server ignores it, yep. you cannot send it to your server at all. So there are things that you still have to do to be PCI compliant, but Stripe will handle like 99.9% .9 of it for you. Yep. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking for the most part. I mean, the, the only thing I was thinking is, okay, if I get to a certain point where I can actually... I, I think it makes sense to use uh, a merchant account or something when you get to the point where basically, what am I saying? If you're doing a million dollars in yeah. business yeah. every year, maybe. Maybe. Right. Maybe. If you're, if you're saving <laughs> enough to pay somebody to fix your yeah. issues. Right. If, yeah. if you're earning enough that the cost savings yeah. would pay for a full-time employee to do nothing but that stuff and still be profitable... Then yeah. Yep. But otherwise, not a chance. I'll, I will gladly pay the the Stripe fees. Yep. My experience with using when I had DPD set up for both Stripe and Drip or Stripe and PayPal was that about ninety percent of people were using PayPal. PayPal, yeah. Same here. I, th I think it was about seventy-five percent for me were using PayPal versus Stripe. Yeah. Which is fine, you know. When you when when you're using something like DPD or Gumroad or whatever, and they have to deal with all of the horribleness of, of PayPal yeah. integration, totally fine. Yep. You really should have both. If if at all possible, because I was just saying, John, right before you joined on, that I I turned PayPal back on for yep. this uh, this launch of the, the Express Bundle, and it has made a difference. I've had a lot of purchases come in through through uh, PayPal instead of Stripe. It would probably make... I, I would, there are probably times when I would just opt to not buy something. If I had Honestly, to if I see it... Yep. I, I'm one of those horrible people where I, I, I lo love to bash PayPal and how horrible they are to <laughs> integrate with, but if I see a PayPal option, I typically choose it. Yeah. yeah. The, like, issues, oh, okay. Easy. the issues that I've had with PayPal, like if it's a one-off purchase or something... It's not a big deal, but their subscription stuff is such a pain in the butt to deal yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, and so I I refuse. I I have people like literally emailing me saying, "Please take my money through PayPal for a, <laughs> for for a Watch Me Code subscription," and I'm just like, "Nope, sorry, not gonna." Yeah. 
your money is your your money is worth less than the hassle of PayPal for subscriptions. <laughs> yeah, uh, in our industry though, it's worth having the PayPal as the option because it does make a huge difference. Yeah. Like, I, I know for my sales alone, like I, I probably got uh, got somewhere around at least seventy five percent more sales when I turned on PayPal. Yeah. So yeah. like, yeah, that's the biggest thing that complaint I have with Gumroad. Right. Yeah, I would have used Gumroad for sure, but yeah, no PayPal. Yeah, and it, and yeah. people email and they say, hey, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy it. And and when you look at your own habits of of buying the, you know, PayPal sometimes is a decision maker. Well, yeah, just, yeah. just today, air, airplane Wi-Fi, right? Right. I was like, hmm, should I read my book or answer emails? And then I saw that the Southwest, the airplane Wi-Fi had PayPal option. So I was like, well, okay, I don't have to fill in all this credit card information now. Yep. So yeah, I'll just click the PayPal and I'm done. So that made my decision. Yeah, yeah the last time I was on a flight with Wi-Fi, they had a PayPal option. And the time before that, they had a pay with Amazon option. So I used that. So mm, yeah. Okay, I just log into my Amazon account and done, which was interesting. And then you ended up buying ten flat screen TVs. <laughs> exactly. You couldn't figure out. They were why. waiting for me at the gate when I landed. It was crazy. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. This episode of the Entree Programmers is brought to you in part by the Telerik platform at telerik.com/platform. The Telerik platform allows developers to build, connect, test, and deploy cross-platform mobile applications using nearly any approach, web, hybrid, or native. With tools like the App Builder to create mobile apps with HTML and JavaScript, control suites for Windows, Android, and iOS, and powerful management tools like Telerik Analytics and App Manager, you're sure to find what you need. With the powerful tools of the Telerik platform, the UI tools, and so much more that it provides, you will be able to create outstanding user experiences. So check it out and try the Telerik platform today at Telerik.com slash platform. I actually was supposed to go out yesterday, but then, I don't know. Play got canceled. <laughs> All kinds of crazy stuff, so I was like, okay, just put me on this morning. Um, I'm waiting for the snow to start here in Texas, in Waco. In, in Dallas, it's it's snowing pretty good right now, but hasn't made it down to Waco yet. Nice. Which I'm is, talking to you guys on an iPhone Plus, 6 Plus. Oh. Wait. The, the, the bendy phone? Yeah. <laughs> I want one. The, this is the first phone that I've bought straight out. Like, because uh, I just switched to from Verizon to T-Mobile. Right. And uh, and and it's actually like it it turns out to be a really good deal. Like I mean, the the phone itself is extremely expensive, right? But I mean, you have to pay for it anyway when it's subsidized. But like with the T-Mobile plan, I didn't realize that T-Mobile has basically unlimited data and texting in uh, international. Really? Yeah. Oh, nice. oh, wow. So if you're going to travel out of the country. Which I'm going to be doing a lot this year. Yeah, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. And so I was able to get my wife and myself on a plan for like fifty dollars a month each for unlimited nice. data, unlimited text, Jeez. and five uh, five gigabytes of tethering per month. Nice. So yeah, so that was for me. It was a no brainer. I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm on. Uh, I just switched to um, Cricket uh, prepaid. Oh, nice. Okay. And I am loving it. So I get um, I get unlimited talk, unlimited text. Um, unlimited data, although they throttle you after 2.5 gigs. Right? Oh, that's funny. Though, I yeah. usually use about 300 megabytes. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm seriously good. no joke. I use about 15 gigabytes a month of, of data Holy on the phone. Cow. What are you doing? Wait a minute. What are you doing? <laughs> How do you I even know that? <laughs> I tether to my phone oh, three days okay. a week. Oh, okay. Well, eight hours oh. a day. Wow. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm surprised you only use that much now. Yeah, actually, <laughs> considering. That's pretty impressive. I, I, I use about 15 gigs a month doing that. Wow. And I know this because a couple of months ago, Verizon was threatening to throttle people that, that used. They, they were, they were going to throttle the top 5%, and they, yeah. they stated the top 5% were people that used more than 5 gigabytes a month. And so I was like, huh, I wonder how much I use. I wonder if I'm in the top 5%. <laughs> yeah, I'm like the top 1%. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, but I'm really paying. How do you know that? They, they, they. Re, it's. I can go onto the Verizon website and look at my reports, look at my data usage report. 
yeah. Now I'm going to have to go look. I'm only paying 35 bucks a month for this, though. Yeah. So I'm really happy. I, I was, uh, like, a year, about a year ago, I was on a regular AT&T plan, and between me and my wife, we were paying 140 or 150 bucks a month. Yeah, about 160 right now. Yeah. Yeah, see, um, w I was going to do, what, like, a year during, like, a cricket plan. Yeah. Um. And uh, because I, because you know, thirty-five bucks a month. But then I saw the the. I was looking at international. I was like, oh, these things don't do. Like, I, how can I? How am I going to do this international? Mm -hmm. And then I saw that I was like, well, for fifteen bucks a month more for T-Mobile, to have unlimited data, to have unlimited, you know, everything essentially, yeah. and be able to roam international. I was like, oh yeah, I, I'll, I'll pay the fifteen bucks a month. Yeah. So, but T-Mobile around here, I tried T-Mobile and it is atrocious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, crickets, that honestly is yeah. just the reason I've stuck with Verizon because when I go home to Kansas, in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, really truly middle of nowhere, a town of twelve thousand people. My parents' house is ten miles outside of town. I still get three bars of four G coverage. Yes. Yeah, I, it's the same thing here with my in-laws. I mean, my parents live here in. In, in the city, but uh, my in-laws live out in this teeny town in eastern Utah, and yeah. Verizon's like the only option out there. Yeah. You can go with Sprint, but then they just roam onto Verizon. Right, exactly. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah, my parents were on Sprint for a long time, and they hated it. So they, they, they went to Altel when Altel came into town and liked it, and then Verizon bought Altel, and they, they really liked the Verizon service. It's kind of crazy though. Like in a couple of years, we're not going to have any of this problem. Like um, it's just going to be it's going to be dirt cheap yeah. for for unlimited yeah. data. Uh, well, it, if you look at the the rest of the world, like over in in Asia and and whatnot, it is dirt yeah. cheap over there because they don't have landline infrastructure. All they right. have is cell phones, so everything is Wi-Fi data, Wi-Fi. You know, they you you send money to people by sending them a text message. Exactly. Yep. It's yeah. it's pretty amazing what they're doing over there, and we have we have far too much regulation, far too much bureaucracy, and far too much of the burden of research offloaded onto us. Right. Exactly. And and, then, and and that's why it costs so much for us. It's ridiculous. I mean, when I was trying to compare plans, like to figure out, and then like, should I buy an iPhone Plus, and then you right. know, are you getting ripped off on the cell phone itself? It was like hours worth of work. Like my wife was like going nuts. She was like, "Just buy me a phone." I was like, "Well, I'm just gonna get you an iPhone <laughs> Plus then." And she's right. like, "It's eight hundred dollars. I don't want an eight hundred dollar phone." I was like, "Well, <laughs> you, you know, you're you could get a four hundred dollar well, phone." You're not but, getting right? an eight hundred dollar phone. You're getting a tablet. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, that that was <laughs> the final thing. Because because when I got her the iPhone, she was like, she had an Android phone, like a Galaxy right. S four before then, and then she was like, "Oh, I don't like the iPhone." And I was like, "I uh, did you." Do you like iPads? She said, "Oh, I love iPads." I said, "Okay, this is an iPad Mini that also just happens to fit in your pocket." Exactly. She's like, "Oh, I love this." <laughs> it's all about framing it, right? Exactly. So, so I, I bought my my wife an, an iPhone. I think it was a 4S or something like that for a dollar, and it was subsidized and everything on on her. Um, her, her on our Verizon account. All right, yeah. So I, I um, got it for her for a dollar, which is the only reason that she she would allow me to get it for her because it was a dollar. Um, and I, I have this brand new iPhone 4S in my hand, and I hand it to her, and literally the first thing she does is go. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> on the tile floor. <laughs> <laughs> Those things are slippery. You should have said this is a slippery phone. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, it, it didn't shatter. She got really oh, lucky. I think it put a small dent yeah. on the side. But I, I grabbed it up off the floor and said, you're not touching this again until we buy you a case. <laughs> There's some <laughs> paranoia around it. Though. It's like, well, so, we it's went funny. and bought her a, a little case. She got like a Hello Kitty case for it, which is pretty awesome. But now she's like totally addicted to her phone. Yep. <laughs> it's funny though, since I since I bought this phone because like I got the 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 six plus sixty four gig. It was like I think it was like eight hundred and fifty dollars, right? Yeah. For, and then my wife's was like seven hundred bucks. And then now when I see people with a with an iPhone six or an iPhone six plus, I realize that like before I didn't think it was a big deal, but now I realize that most most of them are paying like they're paying eight hundred dollars for the phone, whether they whether right. it was subsidized or not, they're just paying it over layaway 
Yeah. And yeah. so it's like it's weird how that like even even with my my mental state about finances, how right. I would get sucked into that. And it was only until I actually shelled out eight hundred bucks of my own pocket for the phone up front. Yeah. That I that I realized that yeah, when you're getting a phone for two hundred dollars, you're not actually getting a phone for two hundred dollars. Right. Yeah. This. But, yeah. The, my my Android that I have here cost me five hundred bucks out of pocket. The 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 cost savings in being able to grandfather a four G phone into unlimited data alone was worth the five hundred bucks for me. Yeah. But you're you're absolutely right. Even if I had done a subsidized phone, I would have paid for it anyways. But what's what's worse than that is when you pay for that subsidized phone over the life of your plan, you end up paying far more for the phone than you would have if you had just bought it outright. Well, they, what they're yeah, what they're hoping you'll do too is that you won't upgrade immediately, right? Right, Some right. Some people will pay for the you know the extra essentially extra thirty dollars a month for the yeah. phone for two years, and then they won't upgrade, right? And right. so then they'll. Be paying that extra thirty dollars a month for four years, <laughs> yeah, and that's uh, that's when they really make the money. Because you know so, what happens is, like us techies, we 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 upgrade, but right. you know, you get your grandma a phone, you know, and the new iPhone, and she she keeps it for you know into into they bury her with it. So yeah, my my dad bought a bought an iPhone. He he came down. This was like a year ago, not quite a year ago. Um, and we we ended up getting an iPhone five. Um, it was I think it was twenty bucks. Um, with on his subsidized plan, and the the options that he had for paying for the phone included paying the one time twenty dollar fee, yeah, or paying twelve ninety five a month for the next twelve months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gee, which one do you want to do? <laughs> yeah, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's funny though, but. Like I was trying to explain to my, she was like, my wife was like, why is this an eight hundred dollar phone? Like an iPad's more expensive. I was like, this is actually more powerful than the, like it's like if you get a phone and it has iMovie on it, so you can do video editing, it's <laughs> it's it's probably yeah. pretty dang powerful. Probably, computer. yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I'm then there's of course so the Apple tax. I mean, they yeah. they seriously make like three hundred, four hundred percent profits on their, well, I'm, on their stuff. I'm, yeah. Yeah, for me it was like I'm selling my iPad Mini now, so right. this device replaces two devices, so that's helps. It's worth well, it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm back to the dark side, the Apple. Yep. <laughs> the only reason there's there's two reasons I don't switch from Android. The one reason is that I'm grandfathered into unlimited um, data on Verizon, and I can use my, without paying an extra dime, I can tether my Android to my laptop using a, a USB cable. Right, yep. And you can't, yeah. I can't do that with um, with an iPhone without paying extra per month. So Unless there's that reason. Right. That's the big reason right there. The other reason that I used to tell myself is, well, I've got so much invested in my Android, which I, I really don't, it's not really true anymore, because there's nothing that I do on my on my my Android, other than tethering, that I couldn't do on the iPhone, because I don't really do a whole lot with my phone, other than a calendar, um, weather, email, Twitter, and tethering. I mean, yeah. and, and all of that, I mean, it's the same on Android or or iPhone. I don't, I don't. There's nothing specific to Android that I do anymore. Oh, Chuck, you're, you're, you're Chuck, muted. You're, you're muted or something. Can't hear you at all. I don't know if you've been talking for a while. <laughs> We've been talking over you. You're, you're like thinking, man, these guys are jerks. They keep talking over me. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, Chuck. Nothing. So I looked at the iPhone 5 or iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, and I just, it's too slippery. And it's yeah. too, too big and it's too slippery. So Yeah. I've I'm got gonna, they're going to have to pry my iPhone 5 out of my hands. <laughs> I um I, I like the like I said because I'm replacing the mid, the iPad yeah. Mini with it so it makes sense for me but uh, but yeah can I you hear me now wallet. yeah there you, there you are. are all right the person with the most complex audio equipment will always be the person whose audio <laughs> equipment fails it, it's Google Plus like the the little um there's a little green bar that shows you your volume and that was moving so. I don't know what the deal was. It hates me. It does. Drama. 
So anything else exciting going on this week? Uh, I'm trying to think what happened. I had like a whole list of things, and then I forgot that what they were. <laughs> yeah. When you get when you get in here, let me know. We need to go grab lunch or something, John. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Where where are you? Uh, where are you? Where are you at? Like, I'm about a half hour from Salt Lake City downtown. Okay, okay. Um, I'll um, I'm, my next flight. I'll be heading out, and then uh, I'll have a little bit of time, and then Monday I've got the full day because I I'm not doing the activity on Monday. Yeah, I'm meeting somebody else on Monday that's coming out for the Plural Site Author Summit, so maybe you can just come along and we can hang out. Oh yeah, yeah, let's do that. That'd be cool. I forgot about that. I was like, I know there's got to be someone I know in Salt Lake City. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jessica Kerr from Ruby Rogues is coming out. So. Nice. Oh, cool. Cool. So but, you, you uh, can hang with with David Brady and Jessica and I. I think cool. Jessica's husband is coming out too. So. Should be fun. So uh, our episodes are coming out pretty good with our yeah, new editor. I, I guess are. no one. We haven't really talked about that on the on the podcast. No, so. we haven't. But uh, but yeah, we've we switched editors and uh, and yeah, so far everything is smooth. I, I at least I think so. We yep. just we just need to make sure that we alternate the sponsor. Roles right, which is going to be a little more tricky because we lost Drip as a sponsor. Not oh. lost. I shouldn't. Uh, Rob said that he wants to to hold off for a month because he didn't get a whole lot of value out of it. He wants to he wants to do it again, but he he didn't want to uh, he didn't want people to get to get numb to his message is is what he said. So he's gonna he's gonna wait for a month or two and then do okay. it again. I was I've been thinking sense. about switching back to Mailchimp. So <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I really things about constant contact. Just yeah. throwing that out there. You know? <laughs> Not to say that you can't you can buy my loyalty, but you can totally buy my loyalty. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so no, I I'm speaking of speaking of buy my fast. loyalty. Uh, I will I, cut off my nose to spite my face. Yes. <laughs> I'm, 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 we still need to try and get um, Edgar to, to sponsor us. Cause yeah. Really oh, love totally. Edgar. And I, I finally got my um, case study uh, information back to them, so they're gonna they're gonna publish me somewhere at some point. I don't know when. Sweet. But that'll be fun to see to see my name in lights for for Edgar. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. When I talked to him about sponsoring the freelancer show, I gotta get back to us in May. Yeah. The, they they told me yeah we're not really sponsoring anything ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did, oh, did you guys happen to catch the uh, the get up and code I put out today? No, oh. was it the one that where you were running? Yeah. Oh, I have yeah. to go, I have to go listen to that. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I, uh, want, I want to hear the. The constant heavy breathing. Yeah, <laughs> the wind. It's, it's 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 nothing but but your breathing into the microphone for like hours. <laughs> yeah, next week I'll do that, and then you guys are gonna be like, dude, you're sitting in your chair. <laughs> so was that recorded on the iPhone six plus? Uh, no, it wasn't. It was on my okay. Android phone. I wouldn't right. dare run with an iPhone that's close to my <laughs> hand trying to talk into the microphone. I well, I wouldn't dare do that anymore because I broke two iPhone fours doing that. Oh guys, with, or, with them in my hand running. So yeah. Oh yeah. I just want to know how you got that nine mile long USB cable. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've done a few walking and running things. I I record them on the. Roll under Ederall. I have, I have oh, a couple yeah. of these. Yeah. And uh, I just take my uh, iPhone headphones and just plug them into the port right here on top. Oh right. And put it in my pocket. Yeah. So I don't I don't count on the actual microphone in the device. Right. But that way it's not out where it's gonna get you know dropped right. or whatever. So. Yeah, my headset had died, so I had to use the microphone on the actual phone instead right. of the. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But so I, it's my new baseline now, 6K now. I mean, not 6K, 10K. Nice. So I've been doing that since at least uh, running at least 10K. So. Wow, just awesome. uh, once a week or all, three like, times a week? Three times a week. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I it actually made sense too because I was up thinking about upping the mileage. So I, I, at first I was like, well, maybe I should start running every day. But it makes a whole lot more sense to run twice the distance 
uh, instead of running yeah. more days right. because of the you know the context switching right. time. So. Yep. Yep. So I do have a few more questions. I mean, we're kind of chit-chatting about this and that, but I'm kind of curious um, as far as Rails Clips, the Kickstarter campaign goes, um, how often I should reach out to people. I'm looking at putting stuff into Edgar, but I don't want to spam people too often. And it's also much more relevant to Ruby Rogues than it is to the other shows. Um, the other shows, I'm just telling people, hey, go back this project so that I can, you know... <laughs> Get get enough freedom to go and, and do better on the shows and do you know more stuff with the shows. But um, um, I I would recommend at least for your Ruby Rogue show twice a day. Yeah. And and you want to vary the time a little bit. Don't do it 8:45 a.m. and 4:45 p.m. every day. You want to vary that a little. Okay. You know, one day 8:45 a.m. The next day 5:45 a.m. The next day you know. You know, vary it a little mm -hmm. bit on, on individual days so that you're getting a, a higher likelihood of catching different people that are on at a different time. Right. So but, twice a day? Is that yes, because that's not too much? No. I'm I'm doing twice a day tweets for my sale this week and I have not had a single complaint about it. Yeah. How, what's the duration on this, Chuck? The uh, it goes into, I was gonna actually uh, move the closing back a week, but I forgot. So it goes through March twenty sixth. That's a long time to do twice a day. Maybe is that's it? just me. I think so. Because if if you're if you're spacing these out appropriately, you're gonna get different audiences all the time. Yeah. That's the yeah. thing about about Twitter. I mean, you, you, I see countless right. reports that talk about how only like thirty or forty percent of of Twitter accounts log in on any given day. Yeah. And and if you look at your your tweet. Um, your an go to analytics.twitter.com. You can see how how much exposure any individual tweet gets. A good tweet, one that is retweeted heavily, will get like 15% exposure. Uh -huh. Right. Well, you know, just look at the DK on it, right? Like, uh, make sure you use something like Buffer or Edgar so you can see the clicks or Bitly. Right. Yeah. Right. And then do it twice a day and keep it up. And then when you see that severely drop off where people aren't clicking it then stop because right. you're spamming it. But as long as you're yeah. getting a good click rate, then you're okay. Then keep it up. Keep doing it. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. I can and, do and, that. and vary the times, like I was saying, so that you have one in the morning, one in the afternoon um, uh, for a couple of days, and then you know maybe close to noon and really late at night for a couple of days. You get uh -huh. Move the twice-a-day segments around during the week so that it's not the same time of day all the time because right. I've been sending all of mine out through Edgar at the same time every day and and it wasn't really doing a whole lot uh, a whole yeah. lot of good because I was getting the same audience so I started varying the times and I started seeing a lot more interaction again. <laughs> okay, I'll probably set that up. I'm thinking I'm just going to create like a list of different tweets I can send and then right. let Edgar, you know, just put it in yeah. the schedule and let Edgar... Yep. Yep, exactly. exactly. And that way you can just rotate back through them when it gets through them, and I'll make sure I have a, a week or two's worth of tweets so that it's not yeah, exactly. the same message every time, and then just right. see what I can figure out as far as what's working and what's not. Right. And I, I actually started, I started using Edgar's um, uh, use once category combined with tweet at this time for, for uh -huh. my promotions this week is what I did. So I've got I, I it, it required that I went in and manually tweeted you know, manually set up each individual tweet, but I I had it um, split the same tweet across both Derek Bailey and Watch Me Code Twitter accounts using the the use once category and tweet at this time, mm -hmm. so that it would go out to both accounts at the same time every day, and then I set up two tweets a day for the entire week like that. Yeah. And then for the other shows, so Ruby Rogues, it makes a lot of sense because this is, you know, Learn Rails, it's Ruby, you know, right. Ruby related. With the other shows, I'd like to tweet to those and just say, you know, basically, you know, Chuck's trying to buy his freedom, you know, or, you know, something that sounds better than that, but... <laughs> I, I would do three or four times a week. Maybe okay. not every day. Right. Maybe, you know, maybe almost every day, but three or four days a week would be... Yeah. Would be good for that, and again, vary the time so that you hit different audiences, different parts of the country, parts of the world. Yeah, 
I also w- really wouldn't make it about buying your freedom. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> I, 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 Give me what, money, I mean, please. Essentially just... what it is is it's going to be about, you know, support the shows is what right. I, the message I'm going to have. This will have no beneficial impact on your life. Right. <laughs> Communicate the value to them. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's what it's about. It's about, you know, yeah. getting me a little bit more time so that I can, you know, invest a little bit more of my time into the shows. Yeah. Right. I if so if it were me, I think I would still do once a day and vary the times and then really step it up at the end. Because yeah, I think that's, that's true, what yeah. you're gonna get. You're gonna get um you know, that like that you, you'll have that urgency at the end. Right. And honestly I don't think it really matters all that much how long it is, because as long as it's like long enough that you can get a lot of people to know about it right. and then you know have some room to ramp up the urgency at the end. You know, like so that's why I think like a month is, or however long, six, five or six weeks is a little bit, to me is a little bit long for a promotion, but I don't know Kickstarter, so. Re- research it too. There's a couple of companies out there that help you with your Kickstarter to like, they have audiences of people who subscribe to Kickstarters in different interest groups. And they yeah, I've had a few it. of them contact me. Okay, yeah, because there's a couple of good ones out there. I don't know, I can't speak for all of them, but I know that I've heard some people having really good success utilizing them. So. Yeah, the I I don't know how much I'm willing to pay any of these companies to do any of this stuff. For five thousand dollars, they'll make sure your Kickstarter gets funded. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. exactly. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. So yeah, um, and then the other thing I've got going on is Ruby Remote Conf, and I just have a landing page up for that right now, and I have. I think I have about 10 or 12 confirmed speakers, so I'm probably not even going to open a call for proposals. Wow, nice. nice. When's that going to be? In June, at the end of June. In June, okay. And this is going to be just the same, kind of roll out the same way as the JS Remote Comp? Yeah, I'm probably going to change the schedule on it, because doing two weeks, three nights a week in the evening, that just about killed me off. Mm. So I'm probably just going to do it for one week, three days, um, you know with, you know, two hours, half hour break, two hours or something. I haven't quite figured that out, but um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm thinking about going with that, so. But I put the I put the landing page up on Wednesday, and I already have like 15 or 16 people on the list, so. Sweet. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is going to be a big one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Looking so, forward to seeing that. Yeah, so I'm going to email all of the people who went to JS Remote Conf and just say, look, um, I understand that not everybody here is interested in Ruby, but I am doing another conference. Mm-hmm. And and I had people during the conference keep asking me when I was going to do the Ruby one, so I can just kind of put it in those, you know, in those terms. You know, if you were watching the chat, you probably noticed a few people ask for a Ruby conference, so I'm just letting everybody know that I'm doing one, and you can get information here. But I'm trying to decide if I want to push them to that landing page or if I want to just wait until I have something announced and then tell them to go check it out and buy. Yeah. Um, actually, what, um, what, one thing you could do also as an alternative, insta- um, just tag people, like send them to the landing page, but be sure you tag them yeah. so that you can follow up. Right. So it's like basically there, just click here to opt in. Just frame it that way. Like, oh, there we go. Clear that you're opting in by clicking the link because then you, you, deal, don't, you aren't dealing with the conversion rate of an opt-in page. Right. You no, know, which if you're lucky is going to be twenty or thirty percent. So, you'll get everybody who clicks it is opted in, and then send them to the landing page anyway. You know, I, I wouldn't even bother with that. I would just wait till you have the page up where you can take money, because mm. if you send them through multiple funnels, you risk losing them more, and them thinking about it and hmming and hawing about it and not doing it. Like, and they might not open your email. Like, yeah. when you contact but, them, right? have something for them to buy immediately. Mm -hmm. Uh, Otherwise, if you tag them and you send them to a landing page and then they opt in again and then you send that email out, they might not ever open that one. Or, Mm -hmm. you know know what I mean? Like, to me, it's it's like you're... Well, if you send them to the landing page, right, and and do that, are you going to increase their chance of buying? Probably not, but you're going to decrease it for sure because there's a chance that they won't open the the second email that actually launches where they can pay. Yeah, the the thing that I'm trying to weigh out here is uh, JS Remote Conf was it ended what two weeks ago, 
And so it's still soon enough to where I can be emailing them stuff or, you know, related to the conference and it doesn't it doesn't feel like I'm coming back to them and going, oh, by the way, I haven't talked to you in a month or two oh, uh, see. versus, yeah, right. you know, uh, coming to them and saying, hey, you know, I'm ready for you to sign up for the conference. Just don't have a sign up for them to sign up for, to sign up to find out about the conference. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if that was you do way the tag, too many sign-ups for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just don't send them to a landing page where they have to put in their email address. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. If you, if you just send them stuff that, telling them that you're, it's coming out, that it'll be coming soon or whatever, and give them like a you know, preliminary set of speakers or whatever, or even send them to a page where they can just kind of see the preview of it, that's mm -hmm. fine. Just don't ask them to put in their email address because then you'll risk losing people, yeah, well, and then you won't was, be able to email yeah. them. What I was suggesting is, like, say, you know, click, basically just say, click here to opt in, and as soon as they click that link, they're tagged and they're opted in automatically. Yeah. And then they just go to, you send them to a landing page that talks about the speakers. There, okay. there is one risk with doing that, though, as opposed to just, like, don't require any action on their part, is which I would recommend. The risk of having them have to click a link is that now you can't email any of the people that didn't click a link when you are ready to sell. Because, you, you see what I mean, right? If you tag them, if you if you basically make them opt in, then you can't announce it when you're ready to sell tickets. Only You can only announce it to the people that actually opted in, because the people who didn't opt in will say, wait a minute, I didn't opt in for this. Yeah, uh, the one other thing I'm thinking about doing is, um, so I, I'm trying to decide if I can use the same design for JS Remote Comp to do the Ruby Remote Comp, because then it would be really easy to launch it versus getting a different design. I don't know. Hmm. But um, if I could put something up now that just says, hey, look, you can get like a super early bird ticket uh, before any details are really released, then, you know, then I can just say, hey, look, if you want to go buy it now, you can just get a killer deal on it, and then, you know, when the details are released later on, blah, 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 blah. Because the dates are pretty well set. Um, it's just the schedule and speakers that are a little bit still in flux. The, you know, the only thing is, I mean, that makes sense, except why offer the early bird? Like, yeah. The reason why physical conferences do it is because they can can the whole event if they don't get... they. They like right. uses a quota system to know. Yeah. But um, <laughs> which a funny story about that. Every conference that I have ever had any insight into, where the people are using early bird signups as a way to determine if they're going to do the conference, zero of them have met their goals to say yes, we're doing this conference. Every one of them did the conference anyways and sold out in the last week. So then they left. They left a lot of money on the table. Is yes. what that means. Exactly. So so yeah. So I would. I mean, maybe you offer like some kind of a small discount, like early bird to like people who have already attended the conference or right. like super right. early. Right. But right. if you know you're going to do this, and there's not a lot of cost in doing this, right? right. It's not like a physical conference. Like there's some uh -huh. cost, some you know, but there's really not a lot. You've already hit one out of the park, you know, pretty much with your first conference. So so I would look at maximizing the, the ticket prices as opposed to doing the things that, you know, the physical conference organizers have to do to hedge their bets. Right. Because you don't need to hedge any bets here. Yeah, the the only reason I offered the early bird on the last one was just that I wanted to see at what level things would get to before I fully committed. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Which, that's what I'm saying, is I don't think that's the case. And here, I don't right? need yeah. to do that anymore. You no. You really don't need to do that anymore. Um, I've, you know, I've gotten a lot of positive... Uh, feedback. I know that there are plenty of people interested in attending, so right. and you know, it's, there, there it's not going to be other, as much work to put it yeah, up. There, there may be other reasons to give people discounts, but it doesn't, it doesn't need to be an early word discount. Right. It can just be, hey, here's my here's a launch sequence ramping up to the release date of tickets when you can start buying them, and yeah. you know, people for whatever reason you decide you can give discounts to people for other things. Yep. So should I use the same design, or should I get another one done? I mean, the, the, how much overlap is there going to be in terms yeah. of audience? Some. If that's a blocker, I would say just use the same design. Um, if, you, if you can, I would update the design to replace the yellow with red. Yeah. Um, just some real minor tweaks like that, though. Mm -hmm. 
and just, just go back to the same designer and say, hey, I, I want it more themed like the Ruby community instead of like the JavaScript community. Just, you know, take the same uh -huh. theme and just colors, just update the colors, really. And if you, if you did that, you'll get... Designers love that kind of thing. I know, they do. <laughs> I got it done on 99 designs, though, so I'm not sure exactly mm. what oh, the process okay. would be for something like that. Yeah, um, but if, if you can, just just update the colors to make it look more like Ruby instead of looking like JavaScript. But that'll give you the benefit of a consistent design. People will be familiar with it, but it'll also be slightly new and updated, which will make it interesting, and it'll also give some visual distinction so people know that they're not looking at the old ones. Yeah, I mean, the big thing is, is the yellows. I could switch right. to reds. right. Switch to a dark red with white text instead of yellow yeah. with black text. Yeah. That was weird. My iPhone hard crashed. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> it turned blue and then, and then just yeah, rebooted. Blue screen of death on the iPhone. Are you running Windows so 10 on that? You should, probably get on the, you should probably get on the forums and ask about it. Oh, yeah. yeah so that Apple can deny it for three years. For three years. <laughs> oh, I, I, took, I did take my MacBook to the store, and you know nice. what happened. They denied they, uh, it? They ran the diagnostics test, which took like 30 minutes. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's fine. Um, <laughs> but, but they gave me the option. They said, we could take it from you and keep it here for like a week and try to re run a super diagnostics test and, and stress test it and see, try to see the problem. Or you can film it when you see the problem. And, uh, and as luck would have it, I, did, I haven't seen the problem. I, I didn't have them keep it <laughs> because I, I had to go on this trip and I didn't right. want to have my MacBook. But... Um, I haven't seen the problem since. It's an intermittent problem, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I might just... I, I guess I'll probably drop it off to them like when I get back, just because what? Cause it, it's it's hard to sell it right in, in the future or if, if right. you have this problem. Yeah. So, who knows? <laughs> Man. And I'll only... Yeah, I, yeah it was... It, and then it, and then I will sell it, and then Josh, you'll want to buy it, and I'll say, oh, wait a minute, if Josh wants to buy it, I, I need to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried to buy that thing off of him, and he he wouldn't have it. So that was a one-time offer, my friend. <laughs> maybe maybe Service Pro Four will be good enough to replace. Which they're never going to produce. I don't know. So um, I heard that the the Surface Three has actually been really profitable. That they made they made a yeah. billion dollars on it so far. Oh wow! So they might actually be uh, keeping that line. That's that's counter to every article that I've read. Because I mean, it's pretty steep, pretty recently. So. Okay, it's it's been like four or five months since I've read anything on it. Yeah, Microsoft is kind of kicking butt now. They're doing yeah. pretty good. Yeah. They need to get ground down, <laughs> get their face pushed in the dirt for a while, and they're like, okay, enough. Yep. <laughs> get back to actually doing something something good for. For the techies out there, and yeah, the, I, I keep on seeing all these things calling, saying that Microsoft is the new Google and Google's the new Microsoft. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of true because the roles have sort of reversed, right? Yeah. Now it's like yeah. Google's like the you know corporate like make you you know locked into our system and and uh, and, and charge you a bunch of money, yeah. and Microsoft is like, no, it's all free now. So free. I think like Apple and Apple, the thing that drives me nuts about both Apple and Google is their utter other utter contempt for backwards compatibility. Like Microsoft, that's always been a big priority for Microsoft. To a fault. I mean, seriously, yes. yes. Not just problem. saying that as a phrase, but literally to a fault. There are there you to this day in Windows 10, you cannot create a folder called C O N, capital C, capital O, capital N, or P R N because of something that was put in place before Microsoft owned DOS in, like, 1982. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, was, it was ridiculous how much, how much to a fault, they, they maintain the stupidest points of backwards compatibility while they do break other points of backwards compatibility that people really do care about. Well, I, I'm living this pain with Apple every day. Yeah. And every, like, every, about every three months, it feels like they change something that breaks something that took me a week to get working in my <laughs> app. Yeah. It is really frustrating. The, the latest thing is um, Apple's forcing everyone to, add, uh, to 
includes 64-bit support in the apps. Oh, yes. So yes. I am going to have, like, so I spent, like, a week getting an automated build process working. Well, it was, it was like, several days with MS Build in Xamarin to get um, the configs and everything merging properly for our different, different environments so we could test against our staging environment and stuff. And that all breaks. And I am going to have to spend, I'm going to have to spend another couple days probably rewriting it. I spent a week... Uh, getting an automated uh, automation set up so that I could submit to the App Store from Jenkins, and they broke that, like like within like uh, like within four months of me finishing it. Just See, that's not a backwards compatibility problem though, because it what it is is that they're pushing you forward, because your old apps will still run on the new devices. So, like for example, the first thing I did when I down when I got this iPhone was I downloaded Pacemaker on there to see if my app runs runs fine. Yeah, uh, well, but I've had. But I haven't other updated. Stuff, yeah, I I've never had other updated. stuff. I've had other stuff that just quit working with, when iOS eight came out. Well, only if you recompile. Um. Nope. No. Nope. Against the existing apps against the same APIs. Yep. Were you, you know. Were you using undocumented API nope. calls? Nope. <laughs> hmm. Nope. I, no, there was a there was yeah there was a transparency issue like a UI issue. Um, actually, several UI issues that I, that I noticed started appearing on my phone as soon as I upgraded to iOS 8. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, they, they, they constantly, they're constantly doing that. They, they deprecate uh, APIs all the time. And just like, no, they make them into no ops. <laughs> and you look on the you look on nice. Stack Overflow, and I, I call it the trail of tears. There will be like, there will be like, Eight or like four or five years worth of answers on this like really basic question, and P and like everybody's like, I tested this in you know iOS six point yeah. one and it works, and then iOS six point two and it's oh, it's broken again, and like you just see pages and pages and pages. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, venting, but it's yeah, it's really fr like the biggest thing as an iOS developer is like sorting through these. There will be like twenty different solutions sometimes for like, one problem. And you have to just like test all of them because you never know which one's gonna work. That's true. So, yeah. Oh, but oh yeah, I, I I just realized I was just about to talk about, about a topic that's off limits. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I almost asked about a topic topic yeah. that's off limits. <laughs> I, let's just say though that I was watching or I, I read finally read the book Fight Club today, and uh, and that the topic reminded me quite a bit. I was, about that. <laughs> I was like, this is how it's going to go down. <laughs> I haven't actually read that book. So now I'm gonna, uh, you're gonna well, you've seen the movie. It's the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, I normally, like, you read a book and the, and the movie, are, they're totally different. But for yeah. Fight Club, it's like, it's, an, it's eerily, like, I mean, I read, I watched the movie before I read the book, but it's eerily like I would imagine if I had read the book first, what the movie would look like. So, right. anything else interesting? <laughs> I uh, I got another VSL this week. Another. These are these are actually a lot of fun. So this was this was another one of the. Um, What's a VSL? Oh, sorry. Sales, sales letter. Sales letter the You're not on, yeah. the, on the. Yeah, the, you, the lingo. I I I don't give a crap about marketing. <laughs> a what sales letter? Video sales letter. Ah. Uh. Yeah. So this was another one of the cartoon ones. And uh, it was for the. It's actually for the natural gas industry. So much more, much more in my comfort zone than the nice. Life theme. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. Did you I, make I, fart I, jokes? No. <laughs> uh. You gotta pull out a Dumb and Dumber reference. I totally, I totally man. missed the opportunity there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was actually, it was a lot. I, I'm really enjoying it. They're really short. They're like three or four hundred words. So you have to kind of pack a lot in. Oh, yeah. And um and you you know they're they're going to be animated so I know like I have to kind of try to write visually so that they, there's good material there for them to illustrate against. Um, oh, but that's I'm, interesting. I'm, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm I think of it backwards. Go ahead. Oh, what's that? I I wanted to create one of those like animated mm -hmm. ones, and I was thinking I was thinking of creating the animations first and then filling in the text. But oh um, no 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 no. That <laughs> makes much more sense what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure. I actually asked that question too when I started working on these. I wasn't sure if they had a storyboard, where, and then I would be writing against the storyboard, or if they'd draw, you know, if they'd pull the animations out of what I said, and it was, you know, I it's 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 driven off the script. That makes much so, more sense. 
Yeah, yeah. You can really think about the sales message that way versus like. I've done a screencast both ways, and trying to record, trying to write a script onto recorded video, is just is the most painful thing I've ever done. (laughs) There will always be something else that I wanted to say but didn't record. Yep. And you oh, can't yeah. go. You can't go back and edit it. You can't change the video because right. you're writing the script to the video. But I left out a major important thing right here. And well, too late. You recorded the video already. You just make that one frame really long, and you yes. say, "No, I kind of screwed up here." But which I, I had to do in another. I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had to go put annotations and record voiceover, and it's. So, but I got a, ra- I did get a raise, so I'm officially making a hundred bucks for these now. So nice. that's pretty cool. Yeah, they nice. the only take. They're actually, um, they take about four hours to do, and actually most of that was two, more than two hours of that was just listening to the interview and like typing up notes. Right. Um. So yeah, so I'm liking these a lot. We're gonna be doing a lot of them, I think, because it looks like we got, we're gonna be getting a lot of this guy's um, VSLs. It looks like. Nice. Nice. So, yeah, you gotta start charging more. <laughs> well, yeah, my my boss is charging three hundred bucks and getting yeah, hundred. Okay. So yeah, so yeah. this the yeah this is more like a volume play. Um, right. We, we know we're not gonna make a lot per per one, but there's gonna be a lot a lot of them, so it'll keep us busy. Oh, so um. I got some like, a, or I got a response back from Ryan Holiday on the that article I wrote from the New York Observer. Oh yeah, yeah. He said they liked it, but he said that it needed to be more news, newspapery, like you like you're suggesting, Josh. Okay. Um, so he actually said that you know to rewrite it with, you know, he gave me some pointers uh, to to put it that direction, and he said that uh, he actually thinks that there it might be neat uh, and and work well to have a column. Or like a continual soft mm. skills uh, set of article, like series, in in there. So if I can get this going, then uh, he thinks that would be pretty popular. So Sweet. that would be a pretty good opportunity. Yeah, that would be a high leverage. What kind of what's the, is, what kind of traffic? I wonder do they get? They get a pretty good is, amount of traffic. Is it the New, what is it? What's the, the site again? New York Observer. I think they go yeah, by okay. Observer online. But um, but yeah, it also can be my bridge, uh, to bridge out of the tech world into mainstream more. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, that's one of those opportunities. So I'm I'm nervous now. <laughs> I'm not nervous to write usually, but this time I am because there's a lot of pressure when yeah. you're writing on this. So right. So it's it's Observer.com, New York Observer. I think so. I'm just popping into Alexia to see what they're. So I'd rather see what the traffic is. Um, yeah, it's cool. If you wanna, if you wanna run it by by me or us, um, sure. During game. Yeah, I'm probably. But it's nice that he gave you another. Nice that he gave you another cut at it, because a lot of, a lot of times the editors are just like, okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so they yeah. won't even get back to you. I did, I did like freelance writing. Oh wow. Yeah, they're um, globally they're ranked uh, eight thousand fifty five. And then 2,500 in the U.S. So that's you know, wow, you'll get some traffic on that. Yeah, that's a big <laughs> site. So yeah, um, yeah. I, I did some freelance writing before I got into the, the programming stuff, and kind of the, the de facto there is you send a query or you used to send a query letter. Now it's probably you know, email, but the editors just they won't reply at all. Like you just yep. you send out like a hundred of these things, and you might get like one response. And so yeah, that's pretty. Pretty cool that he at least you know, another cut at it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But yeah, so that's that's good. I also had that thing. Um, I don't know if you guys saw that email I sent out today with Dan Martell doing a uh, a web webinar for my audience. So. Yeah, that's, that's pretty sweet. Are you gonna promote that just the one time? You think or? Yeah, I think just the one time because he said he only has a hundred slots and he really only has a hundred slots. Yeah. <laughs> so and I'm not. It's not a joint venture of any kind, right. right? I don't think he's even selling anything. I think he's just building up an audience. But I mean, okay. if I can do a favor for someone in that hive of uh, position, I'll definitely do it. So yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah so you might you might get a. I'm trying to think like, so when I sent out, so when I did the I did a webinar this week, um, 
the first email that we like the, I did just like a, an ad I think the best ad only got like around 200 email signups or 250 email signups so he probably won't fill that we only had about about a six of the people show up for the webinar well remember when I did that app masters one yeah on the first email I think I had like 200 signups Okay. How many so, did you do? Just one email? I, I did a reminder and, and then like another 50 or so trickled in or so. But so I think I'll be all right. I'll, I'll, I'll see. Like I'll check with them. That's not, again, I don't want to like push it too hard because it's not yeah, making it's not me any money. It's, you right. know, it's, I'm not selling anything else. I don't want it to look like I'm selling anything when I'm not. Because mm -hmm. when I am, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so. We do enough of that anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Keep checking. I'm gonna have nervous. I'm gonna miss my flight. <laughs> How long before it leaves? We'll, we'll get a running. We'll get a running entre programmers episode then. Yes. It's, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. It's a. It leaves at 11:45. What time is it? I don't know. 11:45. Like no, it's 10:45. 10:45 no, <laughs> in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pretty set. But I was trying to think what else. There was a few other like things. Obviously, I'm still getting Fallout or you know, uh, good from that one blog post. It's still generating ridiculous traffic. Oh it's, yeah. Like like my baseline now has been like you know seven thousand page views a day for the since that wow. thing's come out at minimum. So which is about double, right? Because normally right. my I'm normally around three to four thousand page views a day. I started putting annotations at the end of the YouTube video with two other videos to click the subscribe. Yep. That's working really well. I'm following the click percentage, and my growth of YouTube subscribers is growing exponentially now. It's like several hundred percent growth, nice. uh, like week over week. So. Wow. Yeah, so that's good. Like as compared to the other growth, not not right. the entire right. thing is growing several hundred percent, but right. Uh, yeah. When you look at week over week growth of of the of the compared to subscribers from the previous week. So so that's uh, pretty good. Sounds like that tactic's actually going to work then. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, yeah, I, th I don't think there really is that much much else exciting going on in, that's in my world. That's weird. <laughs> and we, I'm sure you guys already talked about what's going on with you guys. Anyone else have anything? We could recap the whole thing. We could just kind of start. Yeah, we could just <laughs> talk yeah. for another hour and 48 minutes. and just. Re <laughs> well, I, I will tell you, though, John, um, we talked about my sales members at the beginning, and I've, I've hit 50 oh, yeah. sales for the week already. That's great. So, yeah. okay, so 50 sales. So what is, what is that dollar amount now? Uh, 2450 that's nice. That's really good. Uh, yeah, and that was, and that's 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 like three hours of work basically to write the emails and put the landing mm -hmm. page together. And these were so. the videos that you're already putting on Watch Me Code anyway. Yep. Exactly. And, then, and you send this out to your general list, which right. what percentage of your list is Watch Me Code subscribers already? Uh, very small. Um, there's about 350 Watch Me Code subscribers and about 4,200 Derek Bailey subscribers. But I didn't. I, I when I sent set up these emails. Um, I hmm. segmented everything so that I only sent these emails to people not. that were not subscribers to Watch Me Code. Perfect. That's great. This is really, really good because that means that you're able to... I mean, eventually you're probably going to convert some of these people over to subscribers, but even if you don't, if they just buy your package every time that you, you know, or, or you know... I would rather thing, have that because it's... You'll make more money, yeah. Yeah, it's more profitable that way for me. <laughs> yeah, eventually a lot of them will probably say, "Hey, I keep on buying these things. I should just subscribe." Right. Right. And so it would definitely uh, be cheaper for him. Yeah. So, <laughs> but that's that's good. I mean, I think this is a repeatable thing that you can do. It, it, the only thing it hinges on, I mean, you, you obviously picked a popular topic for this one, right? right? right so, right. Um, but but still, you know, I think you're you'll you found a pretty good groove here with this. So, right. and that and it's significantly. If you do, are you planning on doing these once a month or? I'm going to try to. Um, I've already got another bundle created. I was telling the other guys earlier that somebody emailed me and asked, um, hey, I want to get your, um, your your express package, but I need an intro to Node first. And so I put together a, a bundle and published it. And it's it's not listed anywhere. I haven't linked to it anywhere, but uh, I gave him the, the direct link to it. And so he bought both the intro to Node bundle and the Express.js bundle. So nice. I've got that bundle already ready. I just need to put a landing page and build the email sequence for it, um, and then I've got 
at least two other bundles that I can put together and launch, and I'm already working on a new series. I've already started releasing a new series on, on um, RabbitMQ, which will be a bundle as well. So I, I will have a bundle a month for at least the next three to four months. Cool. It'll, I mean, it'll probably start to drop off just as you tire people out a little bit. But, right, right. Um, but still, I think it's still... I think this is a good... I mean, you got new people coming into your funnel too, right? Because you get new subscribers and stuff too. So I think this... Yeah, this... I mean, you've, you figure out a way... Like, I think you've raised your monthly revenue like at a base number of at least by $1,500 a month. I think... You know, yeah, maybe maybe well, a thousand yeah, until you run out of money. Little so. little less than that. Um, given that I've this is the third bundle that I've launched, and the two previous brought in eight hundred and six hundred. So this one has by far been the shining star of the three that I've done. But even even raising it by you know six or eight hundred a month for just a couple of hours of work is totally worth it. Yeah. Well, remember your list is going to grow. It's well. Right. Right. Uh, so, you know, over time, this is going to grow. And you've got down the email marketing strategy now right. that you didn't have. I mean, the other bundles you launched, you didn't you didn't hit it as hard as you hit this one. So True. And hopefully, as as I, I continue releasing these bundles, I'm going to start advertising the bundles on the site more. Because right. I, I, I have so. them listed now, but they, they never get any traffic unless I tweet about them. Right. You can cross-sell with right. that. A, a high degree because when someone buys then you can you know offer them another bundle to buy right, immediately right. as well so it probably to, it's, too. start advertising them more make it easier for those to be discoverable all that kind of stuff oh I did one other thing this week I put up a coaching page finally to actually list oh, my coaching sweet. rates nice yeah. so if you I think it's at simpleprogrammer.com forward slash coaching but I haven't oh, put it on the navigation yet uh, and I haven't mailed it out because I don't want to get like inundated with. I, if I send it out, <laughs> I'm going to get a ridiculous number of. Right. You know, so I got to figure out how to. But when people are asking now, I'm sending them there. So. Nice. Nice. Which I'm getting more and more people that are asking for for the coaching services now. So. And I'm trying to push people towards the thousand dollar a month type of plan, because uh, I think that's probably the the best. Best value for them, and then also the the easier thing for me too, right. and it scales yeah. better. So, yep. Very nice. nice. Yeah, I think this will this. I think this will be, I think this will be a big money maker for you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so the other bundles are still available for sale. It's just that, unless you're pushing people over to them, they're not selling. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah, I really do like the follow-on idea, especially like once you get into Express.js, then it's okay. Well, you know, what are you using to back-end the thing? Is it MongoDB? Right. Because here's another package. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I, I've I've got that MongoDB.js MongoDB package already, and they they tie into each other. I, I, I probably am gonna gonna pitch the the MongoDB.js series to the people that bought the Express package because they they. I mention the mongoose stuff in the express package all the time because it uses that code. I didn't want to have just an empty Express.js app, so I, I built the Express app on top of the mongoose code that I wrote. And and I mentioned the mongoose um, screencasts quite a few times, so hopefully people will will buy both. And, and the, the RabbitMQ series is going to, um, once I get past some of the basics, I'm going to put RabbitMQ stuff into the Express application to show how to do background processing using RabbitMQ. Now, in your sales material, the other thing I'm wondering is, do you uh, take advantage of, for example, having done SignalLeaf and Watch Me Code and some of your client work and just say, you know, we've used these tools to build these apps? You know, so Express and Mongoose, for example, on Signal. I haven't, honestly. I probably should, because all of the, all this material is coming directly from the work that I'm doing. Yeah. It's yeah, like, I would just. Is... Yeah, I, w I would sell it as you know we've actually I've actually used this code or code right. like it to solve these problems. Right. And just just you know so it's it's not just hey I'm pulling concepts out of the air. Right. It's, yeah. It's 
No, these are these are lessons learned from running production applications for the last couple of years on Node. Mm-hmm. Yep. One other thought I was having too is um, so the sad fact of life is that most people who buy or like the majority of people who buy this type of product actually never even consume it. Right. Um, yep. So. And um, one thing you can do is an email sequence, like a follow-up email sequence, mm-hmm. where you you kind of give them bits of the content back, just mm-hmm. even though it's already covered in the course, you right, kind of spoon right. feed it back to them. And then that, if you did that, that would give you a really nice opportunity to cross sell, right? Because yeah. people would be expecting, you know, they'd get used to getting emails about that topic, yep. and you could cross sell right there. It's a pretty I good totally idea. Like it, would, idea. it would also improve your consumption, which would make people happier customers. Right, right, right. That's a really good idea, because I was, I've got this um, sequence set up for, um, for the the Express JS stuff already, which I'm going to edit, and turn that into um, a, 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 not a complete full course, but like a, a, a pro tips. Um, Express.js yep. pro tips email sequence. I'll probably call it a course or something like that. But and I, I'm planning on pitching the this the video series at the end of that. But I could totally do it the other direction as well. Lots of ideas, so many things to do. Yep. And I'll, I'll be heading up to Winnipeg, Manitoba on Sunday to head up to um, the Prairie DevCon, giving a talk up there. Which I've got my talk done. I'm super happy about that. I've only done a complete run through it once. I need to do that again at least two or three more times. Once this afternoon, and probably twice this afternoon, and then this weekend on the flights as well. Nervous, nervous, nervous. nervous. There's this guy I know who can help you uh, get a phone plan where you can text internationally. <laughs> yeah, there you go. What? Oh, John was talking about that earlier. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally. I need, confused. I need, I yeah, I need a T-Mobile affiliate for this podcast episode. There we so. go. <laughs> oh yeah. yes. Oh, Where's all the affiliate links? I got it. So we need to tell our editor to start putting affiliate links into all the podcast episodes. Make sure they all go to my affiliate account. Okay, we have our volunteers for the Salt Lake City. That's the other thing I was thinking for you, um, since you're doing these launches like every month. Right. Is you should probably set up an affiliate network and start. Um, Actually, already, looking for already working on it. I'm, um, I've got I've got it set up with Manning Press already, and I'm going to be um, offering discounts on Manning books to my uh, subscribers and purchasers. And I've got there was one other place that I was I was talking to, um, uh, Cloud AMQP, uh, okay. the people that I use to host my RabbitMQ pr- for production purposes. So oh. I'm, they're, they're going to be offering a discount with an, an, an affiliate link for me um, for people that buy the the RabbitMQ stuff as well. Oh, so I actually so so that's good. But I was actually talking about the other way around. Yeah, I was going to say oh, what oh, I heard oh, was you should you should pay Chuck to send you traffic. I got yeah you. <laughs> because because you have repeat screencasts that you're selling. Right. If you had an affiliate network, like if you pick the right people to leverage. Right, right, you can right. use them multiple times, right? If I'm just going to do one launch of a product, it's not as important. But yeah. since you're doing it so so often, it makes a lot of sense to, gotcha. to like find find you know who would be your your highest leverage affiliates and get them on board because you'll have something that they can sell every single month. Right, 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 right. And that's there. There's a plugin. the The same guy that that builds. Restrict Content Pro and Easy Digital Downloads, uh, Pippin Williamson, he and his team uh, build Affiliate WP, which is exactly yeah. that. And it, it integrates yeah. with EDD and RCP. That's what actually what uh, King Sumo is using. Nice. I'm not super happy with it as a affiliate, but <laughs> it, and it does the job. It. Gets the job done. <laughs> you could always go on ClickBank and then be like, how JavaScript will help you lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> it will stress you out so much. That you, you will be so like freaking stressed by this yeah. horrible language that you will never <laughs> <laughs> nice. oh, oh, you know, the other thing um, uh, I was thinking about this week, I listened to, did you guys listen to the episode of um, Start for the Rest of Us? Uh-huh. No. So no. they were talking about using ad, uh, advertising, paid advertising. Right. And also that book Traction that I had read, you know. So I'm really 
thinking very soon that I'm going to invest in in learning out at least one paid advertising platform and making it profitable on the because I could extremely I could I with with my uh, purchase price right my my customer acquisition cost I can I can definitely make money off of off of a paid advertising platform there's just no yeah. doubt about it yeah um, and so if I can figure that out it's it's a huge way to scale because my right. goal for this year. It, well, not this year. It probably won't happen this year. But my new goal is to bring Simple Programmer to a hundred thousand dollar a month business. Wow! So, and I think it can be done because it's a ten thousand dollar now, you know, mm -hmm. easily. So, right. But, uh, but yeah. So that's so that's how it's going to get there. Is it's going to scale through? Uh, yep. Through it has to be through that, and it has to, yep. more products, higher expensive products. But then yep. the advertising piece has to be in place. So yep. yeah, because uh, you're, you're already maxing out what content can do for you. I mean, unless you bring on more people to produce even more content. Which but yeah, I'm gonna work on that a little impact bit. Impact too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, if I doubled my traffic to my blog, what would that produce? Right. You know, it's not gonna right. be, and that and the effort required to do that is very very high. So right. You know, the, it's better to expand out in the other other areas. Now, YouTube yep. is still getting exponential growth, so that's going to be, you know, still so profitable. But expanding the blog growth is extremely difficult at this point. So mm -hmm. next okay. week is crazy because it's Mountain West JavaScript conference and then ng-conf. So yeah, yeah, I'm I'm in that's my week. I'm in Winnipeg Sunday through uh, coming home Wednesday, and then back to client work, which my client product, this scheduling system that we're building. Is it's getting close to being a product that we could sell sometime in the in the next six months to a year probably it'll be it'll be something that we're going to start marketing and it's 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 amazing. Cool, cool. I I've also got one little top secret project where I'm this guy approached me with this technology he developed and nice. uh, we're working on some partnership. I'm going to help him strategize on how to promote it. Nice. So. Uh, probably I'll be able to talk about it next week or the week after. So. Sweet. Cool. All right, guys. Tune in next time. All right. Stay tuned. Next, uh, what is it? The same bat time, same bat channel. Yeah. Oh, we, we <laughs> forgot our, we'll have to do our, our quotes next time. All right, yeah. Our, the, our the, the thoughts for the day. Or no, let's the do way. a quick round, quick round of thoughts. Oh, gosh. What is your thought for today? Uh, mine's going to be leverage because, as Chuck pointed out on the mailing list, which is, if you want to earn a thousand dollars today, are you going to do, you know, ten hours of, of consulting at a hundred dollars an hour, or are you going to repackage and and sell what you've already produced in a different uh, on a different channel? Yeah. You know that that whole leverage thing that you've been talking about, John, which is pretty amazing. I've made eight hundred bucks an hour off of these screencasts for for you know things I'm just repackaging and, and selling it to to different people a different way. I got yeah. nothing. I got nothing. I'll make mine yeah. simple. <laughs> yeah, you know, get knocked down six times, get up seven. There you go. Yep. I don't know if I have anything really smart to say either. So, which, which your words smart. of wisdom? Just your words of wisdom. Your thought. From and the, anything that you wisdom. learned this week. Just your thought. Yes. What I learned this week. Uh, just keep going. I mean, you know, yeah. don't stop. Yeah. Seriously. Uh, my deal. I did take some time off last weekend, which is why I wasn't on the show last week, but. Yeah, just, you know, just keep going. And it's funny how the universe kind of, you know, it, it's a lot easier to make things happen than you think in a lot yeah. of cases. Yep. So. All right, Josh, you're on the spot. You can say that pizzas, say. you could say pizza's tasty, you know, <laughs> whatever it is. Everything is, is awesome. Have to be, yeah, you just gotta stay, have away cool. I, yeah. stay away there from iOS. Everything is cool. Stay away from iOS. There you okay. go. There there we go. go. <laughs> Your words of wisdom. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> See you next time. See you. All right, bye. Wanna start a business, but you just know how to code. Listen to the entrepreneurs, and we'll teach you straight up to be developers.